there. Welcome back to that 70s card show. John Keating here. Basement tapes number 268. We've, we've made it officially to 1975. And we're talking here about the 1975 Fleer Pioneers. Speaking of Pioneers, Fleer, man, they were knocking on the door. Huff, huff, and we'll blow you away. Uh, give us a license now. Uh, they had a license from MLB. They did not have one from MLBPA uh, for whatever reasons. It's called a monopoly. And uh, anyway, Fleer would keep going. There's lawsuits happening. There's all sorts of stuff. But there's also this set. I have 28 of these, and these are fun little mid-70s uh, treats from our friends there in Omni PA. Uh, 1975 Fleer Pioneers. Let's see. Let's get back. Let's get back. Uh, says there's 28. Full set here. $2.29 average value. Total value is $64. 15 to $40 a set of these will cost you out there in uh, the real world, supposedly. This 28-card set of brown and white sepia tone photos of old timers is subtitled Pioneers of Baseball. The graphics artwork was done by R.G. Laughlin. The cards measure approximately two and a half by four inches. The card backs are a narrative about the particular player. So let's get to the top three. No rookie cards in here. Top three here, according to Beckett, OPG is uh, the wonderful Ty Cobb, uh, that jerk-off uh, Cap Anson, and uh, Cy Young is your third most valuable card. According to the folks at Beckett there, let's get over to, to TCDB. We see card number one. We're not going to mention that person. Uh, card number two, Harry Wright from the Boston Red Stockings. We see wonderful cards. Players posed in studios, photographer studios. Uh, brown border. With a tan inner interior border, we have the player's name, Harry Wright, manager, 1866 to 1893. That is a long career there, Harry. And uh, some little quarter pieces holding the picture onto an internal frame. So there's lots of uh, frames within the frames. And uh, the Harry Wright nameplate looks like one of those gold little things you glue onto the side of a trophy or screw onto the side of a trophy uh, to to name something or put something buck ewing and mascot uh for the new york giants card number three he was a catcher from 1880 to 1897 the wonderful ag spalding from the boston uh, red stockings we see him posing cap in hand uh look at those uh fancy fancy shoes there uh pretty cool uh full full uh high tops going there Backs K pioneers of baseball, kind of like uh, in the vein of those new Negro League cards from the mid seventies that uh, Fleer put out. A. G. Spalling, Albert Goodwill Spalling, a giant for his time at six foot two inches, was baseball's first two hundred game winner in eighteen seventy one and eighteen seventy four. He pitched all the games played by Boston in eighteen seventy five. In the National Association, he won twenty four straight, finishing with an incredible fifty six and five mark. After 52 and 18 the year before, Spalding wound up his brief career, just eight seasons, with an amazing 253 and 70 and batted close to 350. Between pitching assignments, Al played infield and outfield and managed. In 1874, he introduced the baseball to England on a, on a tour. In 1876, with William Hobart, he helped the form the National League then turned in a 47 and 13 season in the new league. After his playing days, Spalding became world famous as a sporting goods manufacturer. Fleer Corp, Philippa 19141, number four of 28, copyright 1974, R.G. Laughlin. So Anthony Rendon uh, apparently can't even play 40 games a year. Old uh, A.G. Spalding was winning 47 games uh, a year back in the late 1800s. Old Haas Radburn is with the Boston Bean Eaters. He's card number five. Dan Brothers from the Detroit, uh, Brothers, I guess, from the Detroit Wolverines, almost a hint of a baseball uh, stadium in the background or uh, a medieval times in uh, a mall parking lot. One of those uh, three. Uh, Roger Brezhnev, Chicago Cubs. Beautiful black uniform there, big C with a cubby bear in the middle of that. Uh, he played from 1897 to 1915. He was a catcher. Uh, Mike Kelly, uh, slide, Kelly, slide. You know him as King Kelly. Catcher, outfielder, 1878 to 1893 with the Boston Bean Eaters, another black uniform. Uh, Ned Hanlon of the Detroit Wolverines. He is playing baseball in the forest. He's an outfielder and a manager, 1880 to 1907. 
Uh, that's some sort of baseball bat you have there, Ned Hanlon. There's Ed Delahante. He's depicted as an athletic, but he was a Philly as well. And boy, he was a rabble rouser. Uh, outfielder, 1888 to 1903. Philly's own. Well, he played in Philly, that's for sure. Uh, Ed Delahante. Uh, Pud Galvin with the Pittsburgh Alleghenies is card number 11. He's a pitcher, 1879 to 1894. Pitcher posing with a bat in his hand. Uh, Amos Rusi of the New York Giants. He is from 1889, 1889 to 1901. He's also a pitcher throwing a ball there in uh, on the field. So it's fun to see that there. He found uh, he found himself a nice pose out there outside. So Tommy McCarthy, outfielder, 1884 to 1896 with the St. Louis Browns. Tyrus Raymond Cobb, outfielder, 1905 to 1928, uh, card number 14. Card 15 is John McGraw, third baseman slash manager, 1891 to 1932. He's posing left-handed with a bat in his hand. Home run Baker. Third base, 1908 to 1922 with the Philadelphia Athletics, card number 16. He's throwing the ball there like he's a pitcher, but uh, we know him as a uh, non-pitcher. Uh, Johnny Evers, Boston Braves. It's interesting that he's depicted as a Boston Braves. Second baseman, 1902 to 1922. Nap Lajway, he's depicted with the Philadelphia Athletics, 1896 to 1960. I think he did a few different Stints in Philadelphia. Cy Young, Cleveland Spiders, 1890 to 1911. Very popular photo uh, depicting uh, Cy Young in this card. Here's Eddie Collins, uh, one of the smartest to ever played a game, according to Con Connie Mack, uh, second baseman, 1906 to 1930, and a member of the Black Sox in 1919. John Glasscock, uh, he's a shortstop, 1879, 1895, with the Indianapolis Hoosiers. That's John Glasscock. Uh, 22, Hal Chase, New York Giants, first baseman, 1905, 1919. Probably the most crooked person to ever play the game. I know you talk about your uh, Clemenses and your Bonses and your Rodriguez's, uh, all that stuff. Pete Rose, they got nothing on Hal Chase, folks. Do a little history reading on him. Three finger brown, three finger on the front. Mordecai on the back, it says. Pitcher, 1903 to 1916. 24 is Jack Daubert with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jack Daubert's first baseman, 1910 to 1924. Wonderful uniform there. He looks like a taxi driver uh, wearing a chef's outfit and uh, playing first base. Mike Donlin of the New York Giants, outfielder, 1899 to 1914. Spanned two centuries, according to this card. Uh, John Clarkson. Cleveland Spiders, pitcher, 1882 to 1894. Buck Herzog, New York Giants, 1908 to 1920. He's an infielder. And finally, Art Nafe with the uh, New York Giants, a pitcher, 1915 to 1929. So pioneers of baseball, a crafty Southpaw who put in 15 years with four National League clubs. Artie Neff uh, ended with a winning percentage over 600. He was one of McGraw's leading pitchers when the Giants won four flags in a row, 1921 to 1924, and Art took a game in each of the, those four World Series. In 1921, he beat Wade Hoyt 1-0 in the final game, and the next year, he again won the clinching series game from the Yankees. In the first series in Yankee Stadium in 1923, he beat the Yanks 1-0 again on a homer by Casey Stengel. Neff made three hits off Walter Johnson in the 1924 season opener, series opener, beating the big train in 12 innings. One of the toughest defeats was a 2-0 loss to Pittsburgh in 21 innings in 1918. A good hitting pitcher, he averaged over 200 for his career. So uh, there's some pioneers of baseball, 1975 Fleer, official Major League patches, stiffeners for uh, those patches, and uh, got them all, thank goodness. So uh, that's it. That's Basement Tapes number 268. Thanks, everyone.